Doug. I'm going to discuss visualizing five symmetries. U1, SU2, U1 cross SU2, U1, SU2, SU3, and U1, SU2, SU3, and diff M. Now each of these are associated with a fundamental force of nature. U1 is associated with EM, SU2 with the weak force of beta decay, SU3 with the strong force of nuclei, and diff M with gravity. Now only one of these actually has a visualization that's well known, and that would be U1. It is known as the unit circle in a complex plane. How about SU2? Well, you would turn to a book like Visualizing Quaternions because SU2 is known as a unit quaternion. Unfortunately, the author there uses hyperspheres and says basically, golly, we can't graph a four D R4, so we really can't, um, can't visualize it. We can take kind of slices of it and, and kind of cut out one dimension and work from there. Well, I don't think that's going to work in general. And so we need a more general tool. Uh, and I think a book is only, always going to fail this because the way to do this is to take something that's a 3D object uh, and, in an, and animate it, make it move in time. Now that time part will be the fourth dimension. So you simply have to formalize this sort of process. So consider a 10 second film. And in that 10 seconds you have 10 frames per second, so that makes 100 frames. Now generate a thousand quaternions some way or another. Sort all of those by time. That would determine what frame it showed up in. Then for its particular x and y and z value, you would draw a little yellow dot corresponding to that x, y, and z. We can do this for u1. And the animation is front, row, and center. You can see creation and annihilation happening here. We start with no dot dots. We get these two that spring up out of nowhere. They fly apart and then they merge uh, and annihilate each other. Um, so it's really neat to see something that shows up in quantum field theory kind of in this concrete a way. On the uh, left hand side I put three complex planes for TX, TY, and TZ. Now they're a little tilted um, because um, there are three planes so they're not circles, they're ellipses, but you get the idea. And I did superposition on the right. In other words, I took every single frame that appeared in the animation and I used it to compose uh, that image. And then below that on the right, I have a random sampling of, uh, of the images. And to me, that might just be quantum mechanics, where the wave function is all possible states. And then when we make a measurement, we get to see one out of those possible states. So what about SU2? Well, let's first generate the numbers. Use a random function to generate a bunch of uh, quaternions. Pipe that into a vector program to throw away that scalar. Then pipe that into an exponential function and pipe the result into uh, sorting function and finally use my program called QSort. And here's the resulting animation. It doesn't like the past. I think of this as like a 3D Mrs. Pac-Man. It starts at eight particular points. The exponentials of t equals zero and every combination of plus and minus one, x, y, and z. Now this grows into a connected sphere that shrinks to a particular value and that would be one zero zero zero. Now this should be international news for group theory nerds. The problem is I don't know how to connect to the group of group theory nerds. But here's a true story. 
I was really happy with this image. It, was, it surprised me. It was really fun looking. Um, and I wanted to be able to carry it around with me. So I went to an Apple store and bought an iPod so that I could carry around this visualization of SU2. And I'm pretty darn sure I'm the only person on the planet who has ever bought an iPod for this nerdly a reason. Now this system is quite general. So let's apply it to the electroweak symmetry. And that would be the product of U1 cross SU2. Uh, it's got a bias for the past. And otherwise, it's pretty much uh, points on a unit sphere. So let's take the SU3 challenge. That has eight generators for its Lie algebra. And four plus four equals eight. So you might be tempted to take one element of SU uh, of electroweak, multiply it by another, but it's group theory, so of course you end up with a third element. So what we have to do is we have to change the multiplication table in some way. And my thought was to take the conjugate of uh, the first one and multiply it by the second one. That will have a different type of multiplication table, and yet the norm will still be one. It will still depend on eight inputs. That starts to sound like SU3. This has a physical interpretation. And the observer would be added the additive identity 0, 0, 0, 0. Now they see an event. They can map that event necessarily to somewhere on the unit sphere by simply rescaling. So this image has the symmetry of U1, SU2, and SU3. Now this is not the standard model. It's smaller. It only has eight generators going into it. The standard model has 12. Efforts uh, uh, to unify those, those using SU5, well that has 24, and SU10 has 99, and as you well know, E8 has 248. Doing things with less is much harder to do. <laughs> but we've got a, a good track record uh, that uh, it's a good, uh, good approach to take. Uh, but clearly it's not complete. Where is gravity? Well, consider these, I call them expanding and contracting uh, tennis balls, um, on different locations in a manifold. And one of the sources happens to be closer to a um, gravitational source. All right. And because it's closer, its sphere happens to be smaller. Well, how can we continuously go from one sphere to the other? And that is by the action of the group known as diff m. So, and that group is associated with the force of gravity. So, in this one image, we have symmetries u1, su2, su3, and diff m each of which is associated with the, one of the four fundamental um, forces of nature, and that would be electromagnetism, the weak force, the strong force, and gravity. So this might be a very important bit of animation. Thank you very much.